Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today, inshallah, I'm going to talk about voice in English. So I'm going to go over lots of aspects. So please bear with me. Let me start with this question. What is voice? Voice is a grammatical feature that shows whether the verb does the action or receives the action, who or what serves as a subject in the clause. In other words, voice is a syntactic pattern that indicates the verb subject relationship. Now we have two types of voice in English, active voice and passive voice. Before we proceed, let us stop and see what is meant by agent. The room was cleaned by John. John or by John is called the agent. So the agent is the person or thing that performs the action. And it is the subject of the active sentence. In the active sentence, John cleaned the room. But in the passive, the room was cleaned by John. It is preceded by the preposition by. Okay, in this example, he hit the ball. This is active sentence or active voice, subject, verb, object. To transfer it to passive, it becomes the ball was hit by the boy. So the ball is called here a drive subject or experiencer because it because it has the experiencer beta rule it means the ball received the action okay the ball received the action of the hitting the boy is the one who uh, did this action now the agent the boy is optional to add it at the end of the sentence or not but usually we don't add it in the passive voice except if your sentence is ambiguous now, verbs also has two kinds, intransitive verbs and transitive verbs. The intransitive one is the verbs that doesn't take object, like movement, motions, and position verbs, walk, sleep, run. The transitive verbs, the verbs that take object, whether one or two objects, like diatransitive verbs, uh, which takes indirect object and direct one. Now, let's go over the uses of passive voice or passive voice quickly. The first use is we use it when we when the agent is unknown, unimportant, or obvious from the context. For example, my bike has been stolen. We don't know who stole it. The crime scene had been cleaned, obviously, by the police. I was told you weren't coming. This is unimportant. I don't want to say who told me. Also use passive voice when the object is the most important part of your sentence. For example, more than 50 people were killed in attack near Mali. Also, we use passive voice in media and legal documents. Additionally, we use it to show more politeness. So if you are a manager and you have an employee who committed a mistake or error, and you want to discuss it with them, so it's um, it's better to say it seems that an error was made, the passive voice, rather than it seems that you made an error, it's tough and harsh. So also use it to write the method section in your research paper and dissertation. For example, the data was analyzed and the results have just been published. And finally, we use it with common expressions like he was born in Japan. We don't say his mother bore him in Japan. He's called Dr. Brown. Not we call him Dr. Brown. It could be. Now um, let's go over uh, the structure of voice, uh, passive voice sentences. Now, if you have a sentence in a present simple, uh, you want to change it into passive. We use am, is, are plus the past participle. For example, Michael writes a new story. A new story is written by Michael. For present progressive, we use is, are, plus being, and the past participle. For example, I'm making a cake. It becomes a cake is being made. So we use is being and made. For the past simple, in a sentence like the company hired new workers last year, it becomes New workers were hired by the company last year. Okay, for the past, the progressive, 
we use was being plus the past participle or were being plus the past participle. Let's see. I was reading an interesting novel. It becomes an interesting novel was being read. So was being. Okay, let's move to the present perfect. In a past sentence, we say we use has or have been plus the past participle. In a sentence like, I have kept all my old pictures. I have kept this is present perfect. So, all my old pictures have been kept. Okay, moving to the past perfect, we use had been plus the past participle. For instance, he had received a letter. A letter had been received. And if you try finally, after will, we should use be. So, he will pay the money. The money will be paid. <clears throat> what if we have a sentence with going to? So, going to be plus the past participle. For example, I'm going to use the computer. It becomes the computer is going to be. Is going to be used by me. We don't have to say by me. Okay. Now, if we have a sentence with a future progressive, like, I will be cooking soon. Will be cooking. This is present. Uh, this is a future progressive. So we need to use will be being plus past participle. So soup will be being cooked. Soup will be being cooked. So will be and then add being and uh, instead of cooking, cooked. Here's another example. The driver will be driving the company car to the garage. So, the company car will be, yes, being, excellent, will be being driven to the garage. And the last example uh, for the future progressive, I'm going to write the exam tonight. The exam is going to be being written tonight. Is going to be being written tonight. And finally, let's go um, and talk about models. One is like, ought to, like, should, and so on. I can't open the door. The door can't be opened. We may finish the project. The project may be finished. We always insert be, by the way, and just add the past participle of the verb. I have to finish this project. The project has to be finished. Ought to write, ought to be written. And let's see this last one. You had better return this book to the library. This book had better be returned to the library. Hope it's clear. Now let's move to the uh, passive appraisal verbs. Now, what is a appraisal verb? It's a verb plus particle. The particle means a preposition or adverbs. So go out, go after, go away. All of these are appraisal verbs. Okay, now if you remember, we said that intransitive verb, that kind of verbs that doesn't take object. Object. Okay, so does this mean that we cannot specify um, intransitive verb? No, some intransitive verbs can be changed to passive voice. Let's see. I wrote with a pen in a passive. The pen was written with. Max will look after him. He will be looked after, or he will be looked after by Max. Here are more examples. You can um, check them. What I want you to focus on that the preposition always follow that verb. He's looking for his pen. His pen is being looked for. So, looked for. This matter must be looked into. Okay, now look at this example. He was hit with a branch while walking in the woods. He was hit with a branch. So, the branch is a tool someone used to hit that, that person. So, we call a branch an instrument. So an instrument is a tool that uh, is used to perform, uh, help someone to perform the action. And it's usually preceded by the preposition with. 
Now it's time to check your understanding. Please change the following sentences into the passive voice. He runs slowly. What do you think? Mm, slowly is adverb, so we cannot change it. He runs a company. This is a present simple. So a company is run by him. They go to college daily. Again, this is adverb and you cannot change it. And the last example here, the government goes up the price. The price is gone by the government or gone up by the government. Okay, he gives him a box. So he is given a box. Now, please try to focus here. This is important. John gave a bar of a chocolate to Jill. Because we have two and Jill here, we call this sentence, if you remember, dative. What does it mean, dative? Asli jumla, John gave Jill a bar of chocolate. But we move, we move the Jill or the indirect object to the end of the sentence, preceding by the preposition to. So it's called now dative. So, معنى, and here we have just one object in this case, in, in case of dative. John gave a bar of a chocolate. So it becomes a bar of a chocolate was given to John. But in a sentence like, the class gave Mrs. Richardson a lovely bunch of flowers. This is a double object structure. We have two objects. Mrs. Richardson is the indirect object. A lovely bunch of flowers. This is the direct object. What I mean in double object structure sentences, when you change it to passive, you are, it's up to you to start your sentence uh, either with indirect or direct object. Both of them are correct. It could be Mrs. Richardson was given a bunch of flowers or a lovely bunch of flowers was given to Mrs. Richardson. But in, in number six, just stick to a bar of a chocolate. You can't say Jill was given. No. Now, passive voice with if conditional. Let's take um, one example here. If she eats the plate of rice, she would not eat the bread. In this case, we need to change both verbs in both clauses. This is if she eats the uh, that plate of rice. This is the first clause, and she will not eat the second clause. So, if the plate of rice is eaten, how one eats the is eaten. And I'm also, I'm gonna change will not eat to will not be eaten. So if that plate of rice is eaten by her, the bread will not be eaten. So when, whenever you wanna change if conditional to passive, uh, change both verbs in the, in the two clauses. And you can um, go over these examples. Now, when you translate a sentence, from a, a passive sentence from English to Arabic, you need to stick the same structure, passive structure. So, we will say gold and copper are used in decorative art. يستعمل الذهب والنحاس في التزيين. Okay, we don't say نستعمل. نحن يستعمل. Passive. The car is being repaired. جاري إصلاح السيارة أو السيارة قيد الإصلاح. We don't reveal who um, fixed the car. An apple was eaten. Okilat at tofaha. Okay. Um, she said that the party has been cancelled. Qalat an al hafla qad ulriya. But who cancelled it? We don't know. Okay. Here are more examples. Let's take uh, more two examples. I was advised to take this medicine. Lakad nusah bitanawil had a tawa. The children were found playing in the street. لقد وجد الأطفال يلعبون في الشارع. Who found him? Them? We don't know. Now let's talk about gerund. What is gerund? Gerund is a verb plus ing. And it has different uh, grammatical function in a sentence. Let's see. I like swimming. Swim and ing. Swimming. This is object. Smoking is that for you. Smoking is the subject. Okay, now we have active, simple, gerund, and also we have active past. You know, we have also active past. So this is the simple one. And here's the past. 
In the past, we have this structure, having a plus a past participle. For example, I am proud of having completed university. So having completed, this is current. This is current form, but in the past. So it means I graduated from university like five years ago, and now I have this feeling of being proud. Also, she is happy about having passed, having and passed the past participle. It means that she passed like an exam in the past, and now she feels happy about it. Okay, all of these sentence, sentences are still in the active sense. Okay, now to change them, to change them into passive, for the simple one, we use being plus past participle. For example, she hates being told what to do. She hates being told what to do. So we use being plus the what past participle. الجملة الأصلية لو حنفكر فيها she hates that someone tells her what to do. Okay, so an example, I'm tired of being insulted. But I wouldn't have to um, uh, to change all sentences in, in their original active sentence. No, like in Arabic, when I say ملك من الشغل, it means that someone, uh, someone force you to work hard and make you tired. But you don't have to say who um, ask you to um, lots of work, just ملك من الشغل. So generally, I'm tired of being uh, insulted. Now for the passive one, كل بس بقول اللي حكينا عنها بالأول having كل بس participle لما قلنا she's happy about having passed طب في البس بتصير she's happy about having been passed so we just inserted if you notice the word been okay we just inserted the word been okay now what's the difference between um the first sentence and the second الأولى she is happy. Uh, okay, let's move, uh, get back. She is happy about having baths. It means um, she's the one who does the action. She works hard and she passed the exam. But in the passive one here, the passive means she received the action. It means she didn't work hard, she didn't do anything, but there's someone who helped her to cheat or to pass the exam. Hope this is clear. Now let's move to the infinitive. Infinitive, we all know that two plus verb, but since it's the, the simple form, we still have uh, three more forms. Okay. She plans to invite, to invite, this is the simple form. For the past one, it means we have a past form for the infinitive. We have two plus have plus the past participle. For example, I was happy to have finished everything early. Um, she expected to have passed the exam. What does it mean? It does, يعني, it means, يعني, we talk about something in the, something in the past happened before something else in the past. يعني, هي توقعت إنها تنجح بالامتحان قبل لسا ما تقدم الامتحان. It was a requirement to have passed the exam. I think for this sentence, we don't have to think about active and passive, just like a general instruction. Okay, now let's transfer these uh, verbs into passive. For the simple one, we just put to be plus past participle. We expect to be invited. As the jumla, we expect them to invite us. We expect them to invite us. Let's see. We expect to be invited. But now we wait the boss to give us the instruction. We wait to be given the instructions. Now for the passive past, we use to plus have plus been plus past participle. Whenever you have have, um, it means something in the past. So I'm happy. To have been invited by her. Asalha, you can just uh, uh, imagine a sentence. I'm happy she invited me. I'm happy she invited me. So I'm happy to have been invited by her in the past. Okay. 
Now we read the reporting verbs. What does it mean reporting verbs? It's kind of verbs we use to, um, to tell what someone said or to make hypothesis if there are that. So we have a list of verbs here like assume, claim, believe, propose, think, theorize, and so on. And here's a simple example. The house was built in 1995. To use the reporting verbs, they said the house was built in 1995. Now, to change a sentence or a reporting uh, simple verbs into passive, we have two uh, ways or two types, either impersonal way or personal one. Let's see. The impersonal reporting verb is super, super easy. We have two steps to follow. First, um, begin your sentence with it. And second, it changes the reporting verb in the past participle. For example, here's an active reporting verb sentence. People believe that the band will go on tour next summer. Let's, let's change it to passive. First step, it, the reporting verb believe, uh, change it to past participle, is believed. And we put that and copy the sentence as it. So it's believed that the band will go on tour next month. Here's another example. The, the press reported that there was a revolution in the country. So we add it in the passive sentence, and then we look for the reporting verb. What is it? Reported in the past symbol. نحول هلا past participle بالpassive طبعا was reported. So it was reported that there was a revolution in the country. Super easy. And here's the structure to sum up. We put it plus the reporting verb in the passive and that and just copy the sentence as it. This is for the impersonal a type. Okay, let's take just one example also. People are saying that nobody will vote for uh, for him. So, it, it, and the reporting verb are saying for the present continuous, is being said. So, it is being said that nobody will vote for him. Now, we read the second way to make the, the, the sentence passive. The personal reporting verbs, and it's um, tough a little bit. Here's an example. Everyone believes that the president is going to resign in 2022. Now, in this sentence, we have two clauses, independent and dependent one. Everyone believes, and the president is going to resign. And also, we have two subjects. The first one, everyone, and the second one is the president. Now, to change this sentence into passive and to use the personal reporting verbs, you have to follow three steps. The first one, start with the second subject in the sentence. Where's the second uh, subject in the sen sentence? The president. So, not the president. And then add the reporting verb in the passive. Where's the reporting verb? Believes. So, change it, is believed. The president is believed. And now, Add the infinitive of the second main verb. Where's the second main verb? Yes, resign. So, to resign, how will the infinitive facade to be resigning? So, the president is believed to be resigning, resigning in 2022. Uh, to resign, to be resigning. Oh my god, don't worry and don't get confused. I'm gonna teach you how to change um, these verbs. Here's another example. The press reported that he was conspiring against the government. We have two clauses and two subjects, the press and he. So we'll start with the second subject, he, and then we, we will change the uh, reporting verb into passive. Reported is and was reported. And then it changed the second main verb who was conspiring into infinitive. لما حولها بصير to have been conspiring I will show you so he was reported to have been conspiring against the government in uh, 2020 uh, okay never mind so here is the structure for the personal reporting verbs and the second subject 
reporting verb in the passive and change the verb in the second main uh, clause to infinitive. And there is a, a comparison between the impersonal and the personal reporting verb in the passive. The first one, it was reported that he was conspiring against the government. And for the personal, which is a little bit difficult, he was reported to have been conspiring against the government. Don't worry. Now, the infinitive uh, verb has four types. The first one we all know is a simple one, to do, to make, to play. The progressive, to be doing, to be playing, to be doing. The perfect, because you have the word perfect, is an and have, to have done. The perfect progressive, to have been doing. Let's see. Now we have rules. So number one, typically, if the second verb in the second clause is in the present simple or future tense, we need to use the simple infinitive al huwa to do. For example, everyone says, the model makes a lot of money. We agreed that we add the second subject, the model. We change the, uh, the reporting verb into passive says become is said. So the model is said. Now, the second main verb, who makes, let's change it to, uh, to the infinitive because it's a present simple. هناخد أي form, أي نوع من الinfinitive هو to do, simple. Is that to make. The model is said to make a lot of money. Now, when we use the progressive infinitive who are to be doing, in case that the second main verb is in the present progressive or continuous. For example, everyone says the model is making a lot of money. So the model is said to be making a lot of money. Now, when we use the perfect simple infinitive who are to have done, you use it when the second main verb is in the past simple, or past perfect, or present perfect. For example, everyone says the model made a lot of money. So made here is what? Past simple. And because we have past simple, we'll change it to have done, yani, to have made. The model is said to have made a lot of money. And finally, with the perfect progressive infinitive, it's a form about to have been doing. To have, and I'm perfect. But when the progressive to have been in whole perfect, when the progressive to think to have been doing, we use this structure if the second verb is past the progressive or past perfect the progressive or present perfect the progressive. For example, everyone says the model was making a lot of money. So the model is said, Halaina was making. Was making the hawila to have been doing is and to have been making. The model is said to have been making a lot of money. So I know this is difficult. So please try to memorize the rules and keep um, these uh, four, four uh, forms, you know, in front of you. Okay. Now look at this picture. This woman in purple decides to, you know, change her style before it. So she went to the stylist and there she said, Hi, I want to have my hair cut. I want to have my hair cut. So in this sentence, I is the indirect subject. And who's the direct subject? Who's the person who will do the action to cut this customer or this woman hair? The stylist. So the stylist is the direct subject. Uh, you know what I'm talking about? I'm talking about um, causative verbs in English. We use causative verbs to, um, to indicate that someone else did the action or the, the service for us. Maybe we paid money for him or ask him or force maybe him to do something for us. In English, we have two types of causative verbs with an active causative and passive causative verbs. Okay, in the active cause verbs, um, let's take an example. I had the electrician fix my broken light. If you notice, we know the doer or the agent who does the action. I had the electrician fix my broken light. The teacher had the students 
write the answers on the board. So who wrote the or who yes who wrote the answers on the board? The students. The teacher just asked them or forced them to such. Okay. So here's the structure: subject, I, positive verb, had, agent, اللي هو ال يعني الدور, the electrician, verb, fix, without any addition, and object, my broken light. Um, here are more examples. The English made all the staff members attend the stylistic seminar. We have subject, positive verb, agent, the verb. And the object. Uh, of course, a verb it could be pair infinitive without any addition or to infinitive. As the doctor indicated last lecture, he said that have made and get. Have made and get. These verbs only take the in uh, the pair uh, form. Some verbs just take the infinitive. Some verbs take both. Okay, we talked about the agent. Um, here are a list of uh, verbs that take two infinitive like urge, force, pay, help, assist, encourage, convince, allow, and so on. So have, get, and make, take the pair, uh, verb, let, take both, the pair and infinitive, but mostly uh, I think the pair one. Um, okay, let's um, go over these examples. The school requires the students to wear. We don't say the school require, require, requires sorry, the students wear, maybe to wear. Uh, the hijacker, Khatif, forced the pilot to take the, pla uh, the plane in a different place. I bid him to fix my car. Um, the mom encouraged her son to apply, not apply. Okay, also use constant verbs to over suggestion. Some verbs used um, for making suggestion like make, get, have, let, and help. For example, parents should allow the, shouldn't allow their kids to watch violent movies. The government should encourage people to invest money in their local area. But let me just try for the first one. Parents shouldn't allow their kids to watch violent movies. Maybe in the passive, parents shouldn't allow violent movies watched by their kids. Okay. Now we use get, get plus person to and the verb to convince someone to do something and sometimes to trick someone into doing something. Now, for instance, I don't eat sushi, but my friend got me to try. Because we have got, it means that I don't like sushi, but my uh, my friend insists and keep talking and talking till I'm convinced completely and try sushi. But we always have some structure, of course, have person to plus verb, like please have your secretary forward me the email. Okay, um, yeah, I think this is wrong. Uh, the doctor said we don't have, we don't use to uh, with uh, have and also um, with get. Okay. So, um, the doctor had his nurse take the patient's temperature. Okay. Now, we use have, um, we use have to, uh, to indicate that we ask someone to do something. Here's the difference between have and get. He got the mechanic to check his brakes. It means that um, he went to the mechanic and asked him to check the brakes, but the mechanic had a lock and said, no, everything is okay, fine. You don't have to, to fix your brakes. But the man says, no, there's something wrong. Please check them. So he tries finally to convince him to check the brakes. But when you say, I have or I had the mechanic to check my brakes, just immediately I went to the mechanic, I put money and asked him to check my brakes, and he did the work. Okay? But when we use make, we, um, we refer to some violent action 
which indicates force. Someone forced you to do something you don't want. For example, the government made everyone stay home because of the coronavirus. They don't want to stay home at all, but the government forced them. Okay. We use let to indicate um, allowness or permission. My dad let me drive his car. The police let them go. Now, all of these verbs are in the active voice still. And now we're going to talk about um, passive causative verb. In the passive, this is the structure. We put the subject, causative verb, object, and the past participle. In other words, we just remove the doer. For example, when I say, I had the mechanic fix my car, we know the doer who, you know, uh, did the action, the mechanic. So in the passive voice, we need to remove this, uh, this door to so become, I had my car fixed. And notice the verb fixed, and here fix. I had my phone stolen. For example, in this sentence, we don't have to think of the active, uh, active uh, voice or sentence. We don't know who stole the phone, simply. She gets hair her bite every month. You could say she gets the stylist dry hair her every month. He got his computer revert. In the active sentence, he got someone revert his his computer. We don't need to use someone. He got the middle object his computer revert. Here are more examples. We almost finish. Don't worry. Okay. I got my car washed and waxed at the new service station. Subject I, the constant verb got, and the object here received the action my car. What's the verb in the past participle? Washed and waxed. The active I got someone washed and waxed my car. Okay, he had his home air condition system installed a week ago. Okay, subject, causative verb had, had the object, the air conditional system, the verb in the past participle installed. In the active sentence, we know who installed the, this conditional system. He had the electrician, for example, or someone installed. Uh, his home air conditioner, and he completed the sentence. Now, for uh, the verbs need and want, we use them in the passive causative uh, sentences in some uh, cases. Like, for example, she wants her house painted. She wants her house painted. I need my hair cut. But also you can use the infinitive, I need to have my hair cut. The manager needs the work done. Can you um, get these sentences in the active sense? Okay, just think. Mm -hmm. Okay, so she wants her house painted. She wants someone paint her house. Okay, I need my hair cut. I need the stylist um, cut my hair. The manager needs the work done. The manager needs um, the worker do the work or to do, to do the work. Okay. Now, model auxiliary verbs may also be used with causative sentences. The structure to express a suggestion by the speaker, such as should. For example, you should have your hair cut. Simply, of course, you can say you should cut your hair. But also to make your um, sentence more complex and to, uh, to take your English to that next level, advanced level, I mean, you can say you should have your hair cut. This is called the verb. Instead of saying uh, you should go to the stylist and uh, cut your hair. Now, unlike need and want, though, the causative verb must always accompany the modal verb. The causative verb must always accompany the modal verb. Consider the example below. He should have his pants 
ironed. He should have his pants ironed. But when we talk about um, uh, want and need, she wants her house painted. We don't have to use had and got. We can't omit them. I don't have to say she wants have her house painted. Uh, I need have my hair cut. The manager needs to have, for example, or uh, to get the work done. You can, but mostly we um, we omit had and got. But with should, no, you can't omit had, uh, had or have. You must uh, put it after should. He should have his pants ironed. I hope this is clear. And my advice to you, uh, we, we, uh, we go over lots of rules and instructions. So please, um, just a practice and summarize them. I hope everything is clear. Thank you so much for, you know, um, uh, for being with me. Thank you so much.